So the next thing that we want to talk about is a uh, uh, good topic is timing and documenting the swims. So now we're kind of getting down into the nitty gritty of uh, you know what you're doing as an observer on the boat. And uh, I know Evan's doing his thing over there. You're Okay. <laughs> so uh, so I don't know if you want to use these or your own slides. Uh, well, these slides are good. Okay. Okay. After you observe a few times, you'll kind of develop a, a, a personal kit, hopefully in a specific place in your house or your garage, and you'll kind of have a, a good sense of what you need to bring. But for now, we'll give you some suggestions about good, good things to bring uh, to help you document the swim. Um, that's up here. Okay, first find out uh, if the sanction organization provides a kit. Uh, find out what's in it. So that can cross off a few of the things that you may need to bring yourself. Although it's always good to have extras of certain things like pens, maybe an, an extra watch is good. Um, but uh, first find out what's in the observer kit if, if that is already provided. Uh, so, let's see. Divided the um, items into uh, categories here. Um, so think about what you'll need to document the swim properly. Uh, log sheets, which should be provided by the sanctioned organization. If they're not, uh, on the MSF site we have uh, MSF log forms, generic log forms that can be used for any swim. So make sure you have uh, some way to, uh, the log is basically the central place where you'll take down documentation. Um, pens are better than pencils. I think you can always cross off something if you need it. But, um, plastic sheets for after you finish one log sheet, it pr protects it from the water. Um, okay, documents from the section order, like the rules. Uh, for timing the swim, uh, I recommend uh, actually two wristwatches. Um, and I recommend synchronizing them with uh, official atomic time. Um, there's a website, time.is, time.is. You go to and find the official time, synchronize both watches with that. Uh, and that is what you will record when the swim begins, when you see the swimmer enter the water. Take down the time of day in hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, you, uh, it's also good to have a stopwatch, but I recommend having a second person start the stopwatch. Um, the reason the time of day is the primary thing you take down and not the stopwatch is, well, what happens if you lose the stopwatch or someone bumps it or it runs out of batteries in the middle of the swim? Then it's gone. Like, then you've lost the time. So you need to know anyway what the time of day is when the swim starts. Uh, and that should be the basis of the final time. So when the swim ends, check the time of day. You have two, two wristwatches, hopefully, so if one runs out of batteries or falls overboard or something, you have a second one. Uh, take the time of day at the finish, hours, minutes, and seconds. And then either you or whoever down the line can do the arithmetic and figure out the elapsed time later on. Um, if you don't have a second stop or a second wristwatch, Find somebody else on the crew or the boat that does, and sync up your watches. If uh, if you can't figure out how to sync up your watches, write down what the offset is, so that in the event that your watch does die, you default to that other backup watch, and you know what the offset is. So that's kind of the extra layer of redundancy. Well, I'd say it'd be preferable to synchronize the watches than to write down the offset. The offset is definitely better. Than so there is, there is an objective time, atomic time. Go to the website, time.is. Your smartphone should probably also be synchronized with atomic time. So if you look on your phone, assuming it's connected to the, the cell network, it should already be synchronized. So synchronize your watch with your phone. It will work most of the time. Um, OK. Uh, thermometer for getting the water temperature. One of the floaty duck thermometers, bathtub thermometers, is not much more. You want a weighted, like fly fishing style thermometer that will sink. Uh, tie it off with a rope. Um, try to avoid 
if you uh, are uh, dropping the thing in the water, if, even if it's tied to something, don't do it near the prop. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's happened to me. It's happened to me more than once. So don't do it. Uh, then you uh, then you don't have any way to get the water. Thermometer um, also works for getting the air temperature. So if you keep it out in the shade on the boat somewhere, out of the sun, um, it will give you the air temperature. <coughs> uh, camera is just a good thing to have. Your phone is a camera usually. Um, take lots of pictures. Take video, it's good to see what this, in, you know, uh, 20 years down the line, it's great to have video and see what the swimmer looked like when they're, when they're swimming, what their stroke looks like. Then you can look at the time and say, yeah, that makes sense. That, that looks like a 10 hour paddle in this one. Um, see how fat you look, too. What's that? See how fat you look. <laughs> yes. yes. You meant to say fit you are, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> Most uh, sanction arts don't require you to take pictures as an observer, but I think it's a really good camera anyway, even you know, if it's not required. Uh, and lists the help of uh, crew members to help you take pictures of the observers, and then you can compile them all after the fact. Uh, it's really nice for the swimmer to be able to see that. The log sheet is kind of uh, black and white, uh, so to speak, and uh, having the having the uh, Multimedia kind of documentation is really nice. Uh, okay, optionally, um, but things that I always bring a smartphone and a waterproof case. What if it gets wet? Um, USB chargers. A lot of boats only have like one outlet, and you know, you have 10 people on the boat or something, and pretty soon the outlets are taken up. So bring a, a USB charger to charge your phone. Uh, GPS tracker, your phone can work as a GPS tracker if you have an app for that. Uh, Spot trackers are nice, require subscriptions. Uh, if you have a Garmin watch, that also works as a GPS tracker, just make sure the swimmer's not wearing it. Um, a Nemo meter uh, measures the wind speed. Um, GPS doesn't always work in all areas, though, so what do you recommend the most reliable one? Um, well, uh, I, I always bring like three GPS trackers. Usually one of them works. But I think the ones in phones are probably the, the lower quality transponders. Uh, and a Garmin watch will typically have a nicer one. So that's, that's been my experience. Yeah. yeah. One thing that we learned that we didn't know is that the spot tracker shuts off. After 24 hours. After 24 hours. hours. So yes, it does. After 25 hours. <laughs> There's going to be a little gap there until so you notice, or somebody calls you and says, It's a tracker, stop, what happened? So, that way I don't know about the other ones. But we Very good point. Yeah, the spot trackers <laughs> switches off after 24 hours, and after 24 hours, you're probably going to be tired and you're going to forget. So, set an alarm. Set an alarm. Uh, we had two trackers, and they both went off <laughs> at 24 hours on a 35 hour swim. So, it was a little bad. We fortunately, fortunately, we had a backup handheld GPS, so we had you know data documenting the gap. And the gap was only it was less than an hour, but uh, but still, and we had the written log as well. But things like that can happen. So, so you periodically check your spot tracker as, as yeah. an observer. Yeah, make sure it's make sure written. make sure the batteries have the guy. And that's why it's good to have the, a watch or a phone or something. That, as a backup in case the spot goes off or something. Um, on Sarah Thomas' one, we had six GPS tracks. Uh, and we did forget when the spot went off. I think, it, I think we had about a half an hour on the spot tracker that was uh, after 24 hours. But we all, you know, we had watches and phones and stuff. Uh, okay. Um, oh, as an observer, uh, it's really good to be able to look at the ocean or the lake and estimate what the wind speed is. Um, you will, I think the white caps start forming about 12 knots. Um, so you'll, you'll, anything much above 20 knots and it becomes unswimmable pretty soon. So generally if you have an idea like what zero looks like, just flat. What five knots looks like, there's ripples. 
Uh, 10 knots is a little bigger than you know, white caps. White caps are 12 to 14 knots, and then uh, up from there. Um, if you're putting down that somebody's in your swimming and it's like 35 knots, no, probably not. They're probably, they're probably not in the water anymore. Um, but uh, I have a, I have a, a Nemo meter that's good to have just to confirm your visual reading on it. Um, they're pretty cheap, 30, 30 40 bucks. Where, useful to have them where would you get one of those? Where? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, safety. Bring uh, the little blinkies that you wear out here. Uh, not in blinking mode, though. Solid mode. Solid mode for the blinkies. Clip them as it's you can clip them right here. And then if it's out, you can, you can, the swimmer can see where you are. And, and all the crew should really have these on. Extra glow sticks. Uh, in case the swimmer loses on them. Uh, LED headlamp is really good, but not on the white mode because that's blinding at night. So have, have a red mode for your headlamp. Marine radios. Uh, our observer, the SPCSA observer kit has, has one of these. It's good to have one anyway. Should be waterproof and floating. Basically, walkie talkies are just as good as, as VHF for communicating between, between crew. VHF if you want to contact the uh, First aid kit and AED. Probably don't expect you to bring those on your own, but uh, a, a well stocked observer kit from the section of the world. Both of these. Um, okay, I just want to add one thing. Yep. What I found that on the clipboard, because when you're writing and it's at night and you can't see, you don't want to turn that whole thing on. I found um, the, it's like Big Five or any of those places have little lights that clip on, um, or the ones that can hook on your zipper so that you can just turn it on and off and you're not lighting up the whole thing. Those kind of smaller, and so you can still see to write and to get somewhere without turning on the lights because they're a real distraction for everybody, the swimmer and the and the Monterey Bay Swim Association Observer Kit has everything on this list in the kit, with the exception of, uh, let's see, uh, your camera. We don't provide a camera. And we don't provide a USB charger for you. But I think every other item on here is in our kit. Um, and we're always adding to that. It sounds like, you know, Sylvia, you carry the similar kits on the boat. Yeah, I mean, what we stock, we also end up stocking not just for ourselves, but also kind of, we, we set up, I think, Evan, who's at first the observer station. Um, so we have, like Kim mentioned, a little flip light, we have open headlights. Um, we've got new kits of chargers because uh, we find that the char all of a sudden your charging cable dies. And we usually have four banks of the USB chargers, and then also for observers, we just added, we put on a, a small portable scanner. So that when they're done, before they leave the boat, we know we're all tired, things get lost. Um, we're actually asking observer before they leave the boat to scan, physically scan their paper observer logs to a digital USB. We ask it to be done twice so that we have a copy, the observer has a copy in digital as well as the hard paper when they walk off the boat. There's a tiny scanner on your cell phone download app, and it can do yeah. a PDF file and picture say. immediately, yeah. and that's another backup. Take pictures of your phone. And tell them I know I've been on your ability of all kinds of backup. Just backup scanner. Yeah, I'll show you those. Okay, moving on. Okay, yeah. yeah. uh, just one more thing on the previous slide. <laughs> Smartphone, this is like a Swiss Army knife for the observer. You can do so many things with. One of these phones with the right apps. You can do GPS. You can, you know, if you if your binder full of log sheets falls in the ocean, you can take a lot of observations. Like you can do everything on this phone. One of my favorites is uh, it's called Time Differential. I don't know if anybody's used that. But when you've been on a you know a, a swim that goes you know spans a day or you're into the next day or is, you know even worse a swim that goes like 36 hours or something. You're trying to do the, you're trying to do the math hours minutes seconds when you haven't been asleep you know 15 hours or something it's nearly impossible but time differential you just put in the start time the day of the start time and the end time and it tells you the uh, duration the elapsed time of that so that's great um, but always have backups in case what if your phone falls in the ocean then you need you need to go back to uh, doing doing stuff old school. Um, Okay, uh, personal comfort, um, 
could be on a vote for could be quite a while. So make sure you're prepared for that. Sunblock is totally essential. Um, sunglasses also. Make sure uh, coordinate with the swimmer and the crew. Find out if they're bringing food for you. It's nice if they do, um, but they don't always. Uh, in which case, you need to be prepared with your own stuff. Um, clothing for a variety of weather. It could be sunny and hot. Uh, at night, you're out on the ocean. The Tahoe. It could be chilly. Uh, uh, jackets with uh, some waterproof element to them also. Uh, toothbrush and toothpaste. It's kind of... It, it feels nice uh, after a while, but also it'll, it'll have, um, help your interactions with other people. <laughs> uh, I always bring a white floppy hat. Uh, it keeps the sun out of my eyes and protects my neck. And I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt typically to observe it. Sleeping bag uh, makes the, the bunks in a boat a little more comfortable if, if the boat has bunks. Uh, Deck chair, not all boats can accommodate a deck chair, so find out what it looks like. But it's good to have, good to have places to sit. It's like a traditional like fishing boat with a big deck in the back. Chair can be. Yeah. One nice thing about so you're going to have a deck chair, um, and it's a high rail boat that you know, you're on, like some of the boats down south. If you're observing and you're sitting in a chair, you need to be able to see over the railing and see the swim at all the time. <laughs> So just think about that in chair selection. So I know we've gone through that. We've learned that the hard way, and now we have chairs that set up high, so we can see over the rail, and you know if we can sit down, but we can always see this one. Uh, okay, you know, there's a lot of little things: zip ties, and carabiners, and batteries, extra caps and bottles, maps, and little stuff like that is helpful. Sometimes it sort of forgets or. They bring the wrong type of uh, setup for their feeding, and you have to reconfigure it at the last minute. These are all little, little things that are helpful. Um, okay. Yeah, we have, like, uh, in Monterey Base Kit, I know we have extra gear for the swimmer, extra caps. We have clear goggles, because a lot of times people forget clear goggles for night swimming. And I know that, um, I don't know if Tom does this for Tahoe, but I'm, we, you know, Sylvia and Brian now have prescription goggles for people. We do, right? we have swimmers who didn't tell us they can't see. Yeah. <laughs> so we now have the goggles. Oh wow. Just in case. There's a lot we can do in case they forget anything. And so, we have rope as well. Like, oh, you have, right. to, do, so have yeah. to do a whole feeding setup for them. Um, duct tape and rope. Yep. Oh, duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's still a duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> 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 